Hey, welcome once again to the Journey Church, New York City. I'm Carrick, and I want to thank you for joining me today as we kick off our brand new teaching series called God on Film, where we're going to be discovering the spiritual meaning behind some of the summer's biggest movies. It's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait to get started. So if you haven't already, go ahead and click that button beside the live stream player. Download your message notes so you can take some notes and follow along during the service today. Now, you may be wondering, why in the world is a church doing a teaching series called God on Film? Well, this is important because movies have become our modern day parables. In fact, movies reflect a lot of what's going on in our culture. But not just that, movies also impact what's going on in our culture. So I think it's important that we as a church engage what these movies are saying. Now, let me just be clear at the beginning. We're not going to be showing these movies. That would be highly illegal. And we're also not, we're not even endorsing these films. But what we're doing is we're exploring the, the main spiritual themes behind each film. And then we're looking at what the Bible has to say about each one so that, that we can learn more about God, so that we can grow in our faith. For instance, what, what does this look like? For instance, later this summer, we're going to be looking at the new movie Twisters about chasing tornadoes. And we're going to look at what to do when life takes an unexpected twist. Or maybe you heard that the new Despicable Me movie is coming out later this summer. We're going to be looking at how to move from chaos to calm in our lives. And I know there are no New Yorkers who are struggling with chaos right now. But I really believe these next two weeks are going to be so much fun. Next week on Father's Day, we're looking at the new Beach Boys documentary, and we're going to look at the struggles of a godly man. And, and rumor has it that there may even be some eating contest following our 1130 in-person services in Times Square. And they get this in two weeks, uh, we're going to look at the new Inside Out movie, and we're going to talk about how to deal with how I feel. We're going to look at what the Bible says about how to manage our emotions, emotions like sadness and anger and, and envy. We're going to get a lot out of that. And that's just some of what's coming this summer. And so listen, you made a great decision to be here today, but I want to encourage you to make a decision today, make a commitment today that you're going to be here and be a part of this God on Film teaching series as much as possible throughout the summer. In fact, that's the fourth next step on your connection card today. I hope you'll check that. Make a commitment to be here as much as possible this summer. And I believe if you do, I believe that by the end of the summer, you're going to look more like Jesus. You're going to be stronger in your faith. I believe that you're going to be a wiser, happier person if you'll make that commitment. Well, listen, we're kicking off God on Film today. We're looking at the, the, the new hit movie, If. And today I want to talk to you about discovering how to discover God's dream for your life. Now, in this new movie, If, a young girl named B discovers that she has this unique ability to see other people's imaginary friends, their ifs. That's what if stands for, imaginary friend. And what she sees is that, that as, as people, as, young, as kids that grow up to be adults, they discarded their imaginary friends. And so she sees this. And then she discovers that her neighbor, Cal, has this same ability. And so together they team up and they try to reconnect these abandoned ifs, these abandoned imaginary friends, and reconnect them to their, their, uh, their childhood kids so that they both can be happy. That becomes their main purpose. Now, let me ask you this. How many of you had an, had an imaginary friend when you were growing up? You know, Go ahead, and, wherever you're watching from, raise your hand if you had an imaginary friend. I know a lot of people did. I want you to raise your hand now if, if you still have an imaginary friend. In fact, no, don't raise your hand uh, for that because that's probably not a good thing. Because what we discover in life is that as we grow up, we discard our imaginary friends as, as we grow and as we mature. What the movie If illustrates is what so often happens in our, in our own lives with our faith. What happens to our childlike faith as, as we grow older, as life comes at us. See, when you were young, you had a strong faith. You trusted God. Your faith was unshakable. But for a lot of people, as they grow up, maybe you lost that childlike faith in God. Maybe you lost sight of how God is always with you and how God can handle any problem that comes your way. Maybe at some point you lost sight of the dream that God has for your life. You see, God has a dream for your life. From the moment He formed you in your mother's womb, you were designed by God for a great purpose. 
But when you don't know your purpose, when you lose sight of the dream that God has for you, and you forget that you were created for something greater, let me tell you, life gets confusing. And if you don't know God's dream for your life, then guess what? You live your life just trying to make up a dream, make up a purpose for your life. You make up your own purpose for living. Unfortunately, you can waste a lot of your life floating from one dream to another trying to find the meaning of life. And that's a tragedy. Even King Solomon, the wisest man uh, to ever live, he struggled with understanding his purpose. In fact, you can see his frustration in uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 2. I'm going to put it up on the screen. You have it in your notes as well. Look at what Solomon says. He says, everything is meaningless, says the teacher. Completely meaningless. Let me ask you this. Have you ever felt that way? You know, when you lose sight of God's dream for your, for your life, like the adults in the movies lose sight of their ifs, they lose their imaginary friends. When you lose sight of God's dream for your life, your life can feel meaningless. It can feel hopeless. And you feel lost. And look at what happens. I put some, uh, some of these in your notes. What happens when I lose sight of God's dream for my life? Well, when I lose sight of God's dream, life seems useless. Like, like it doesn't even matter then life seems tiresome. When you don't know your purpose, you feel exhausted all the time. When you lose sight of God's dream for your life, life seem, seems unfulfilling. It seems empty. Life seems insignificant. It's not meaningful like you want it to be, like it doesn't matter. And when you lose sight of God's dream for your life, sometimes life seems uncontrollable, chaotic. Look, the Bible teaches that if you don't understand God's purpose for your life, you're always going to feel lost because you're missing the point of life. But here's the good news. I already told you this, but God created you for a purpose. And God wants you to know your purpose. Now, let me tell you, you just can't make up a, a purpose in life because your purpose was given to you by God. It already exists. Listen, you were made by God and for God. And until you understand that, your life isn't going to make any sense. You know, the two most important days of your life are the day that you were born and then the day you discover why you were born. And if you haven't discovered God's dream for your life, why you were put on this planet, you're not living, you're just existing. You're not, thri you're, you're not thriving, uh, you're just surviving. And so what is God's dream for you? What is God's purpose for your life? Well, in your notes, let's jump in. And let's go to the Bible, in fact, to find out how to discover God's dream for your life. How to discover God's dream for your life. Here's the first pursuit. If you want to discover God's dream, God's purpose for your life, this needs to be your first pursuit. Write this in. Pursue God's power to live on. Write that in. Pursue God's power to live on. Listen, you need a power source to live on because this life is draining, stress conflict, frustration, everyday work. They drain your strength every day. Did you know that you work longer hours than either your parents or your grandparents did? Did you know that 50 years ago, the average American worked about 40 hours a week? But today, four out of 10 Americans log in over 50 hours of work per week. In other words, most of us work an, on average a day a week more than our grandparents did. Listen, it's no wonder you're so tired. So where do you find the power to live on? Where do, you get, where do you get the energy to keep going when you feel like giving up? Well, people try different things. There are therapies you can try out. There are pills. There's caffeine. There are motivational videos. But the real secret to power to live on is this. Simply put, focus on God. The secret to power to live on is focus on God. Because the more you focus on God, the more power you're going to have in your life. You see, God is the source of all power in the world. And God's power is available to you. But to plug into God's power, you have to connect to Him. And that's what we find in Isaiah chapter 40, beginning of verse 30. I love this passage. Look at what it says. It says, even youths will become weak and tired and young men will fall in exhaustion. And maybe that's how you feel right now. Maybe you came to church online today and you feel exhausted, like you can't take another step. And that happens. He says this, 
But those who trust in the Lord, those who focus on God, will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. I want you to listen to me. If you spend a lot of time focusing on God, you're going to have a lot of power in your life. If you spend a little time focusing on God, you're going to have a little bit of power in your life. And if you never, you spend no time focusing on God, let me tell you, you're not going to have any power in your life. You know, there's a word for focusing on God in the Bible. And that word is worship. That's what worship is. A lot of people have uh, these big ideas about what worship is, but worship is simply focusing on God. Now, understand, if you don't worship God, you will worship something. Because God created you with this need, with this desire to worship. And so if you don't believe me, if you don't believe that you'll worship something, let me tell you, just go to the next Taylor Swift concert. And then look at the people around you while she's performing. Look at them screaming and losing their mind. If that's not worship, I'm not sure what is. And we worship all kinds of things. We we focus our attention on things like money and, and career and hobbies and people and possessions. Where your attention is most focused, that is what you're worshiping. Now, tragically, most people in our world worship the wrong things. We worship things other than God. But the only person or thing worthy of our worship is God. Now, some people think worship is about ritual. It's not. Some people think it's about routine and rules. It's not. You know, some people think it's about a list of what you do and what you don't do. That's wrong too. Worship, like I said, is simply focusing on God. And God promises you that He's going to give you His power when you focus on Him. And that's what 2 Peter 1.3 reminds us. It says, by His divine, what? Power. Circle that word power. By His divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We've received all of this by coming to know Him the one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. And let me just say this. That's why being uh, here on Sunday with your church family is so important. Because here we take our focus off of all of the other distractions in this world and we place our focus where it should go, on God and God alone. We worship God and him alone. And listen, you don't just worship God on Sunday, but you focus on God and you worship Him during your daily quiet time as well. And when you read the Bible and you pray. And the more you do this, the more you're going to find yourself restored and renewed and refreshed because you're going to have more of God's power in your life. Like I know many of you joined us at Church Online today feeling fatigued. You know, you can see it on your face when you look in the mirror. You feel overwhelmed. I want to challenge you. Refocus on God today. Plug into His power. Because I'm going to tell you, you're not going to make it in this city in 2024 if you don't have power to live on. So if you want to discover God's dream for your life, God's purpose for your life, it begins by focusing on God, by pursuing His power to live on. That's the first pursuit. Then, here's the second pursuit. If you want to discover God's dream for your life, write this in. I I pursue God's power to live on, that's worship. Then secondly, pursue God's people to live with. Write that in. Pursue God's people to live to live with. Now, I want to be very clear about this, but you were made for relationships. God created you to need relationships. In fact, that's why we have imaginary friends to begin with. Because if we don't have real friends, well, we'll just make them up. But you need real people around you to support you and encourage you if you're going to make it in this life. And this is what the Bible calls fellowship. You have a God sized now listen, you've got a God-sized hole in your life, a God-sized hole in your, your heart. You need God. He's your, he's your first pursuit in life. If you want to discover your purpose and his dream for your life, you pursue him. That's worship. But you also have a people-sized hole in your life. God's dream for your life is for you to have godly relationships. And, and see, that's what makes life interesting. People make life fun. A study done by the California Department of Health discovered that if if you isolate yourself from other people, if all you have in your life are acquaintances but no real friends, then here's what happens. You are three times more likely 
to die an early death. You are four times more likely to, to suffer emotional burnout. You're five times more likely to be clinically depressed. And if you don't have any real friends, you are ten times more likely to be hospitalized for an emotional or mental disorder. Why is that? Why is there so much unhealth in our lives if we don't have close friends? Well, it's because you were made for relationships. I want you to read this next passage with me. It's found in uh, the Old Testament book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 4. We're going to begin in verse 9. Wherever you're joining us for Church Online, I want you to read this with me. Are you ready? Go. Two people are better off than one, for they can help each other succeed. If one person falls, the other can reach out and help. See, we're fortunate because God has designed a custom-made support network just for you. And it's called the church. Church is not something you go to. Church is not an event you attend. The, the church isn't a building. No, the church is a family that God designed for you to connect to. And, and God wants you to find healthy, godly relationships in the body of Christ, in, in the church. You know, when you get busy, you know what the first thing that you, you shortchange is? The first thing you shortchange are your relationships. And the first relationship that gets hurt when you get busy is your relationship with God. You cut your relationship with God down. And you start saying, well, you know what? I don't have time to have a quiet time this morning. I don't have time to read my Bible. I don't have time to pray. I got to rush. I get to get to work. Uh, and, and so what happens is God gets shortchanged. And why do we shortchange God first? Because nobody sees it. Nobody notices that you've shortchanged God except for you and God. And then as life continues to get busy, you, you start cutting back on your relationships with other Christians. Well, you know what? I don't have time this semester to be in a growth group. My life is too busy. I don't have time to go to church every Sunday. And listen, what happens is when you start cutting back on relationships, it always comes back to hurt you. Because you're cutting out the very thing in your life that you need to support you when life gets difficult. Let me tell you, you can cut back on your career. You can cut back on your hobbies, but you cannot afford to shortchange your relationships. You can replace things, but you can never replace people. And that's why you can't replace the church in your life. In Acts chapter 2, beginning in verse 46, here's what it says. I'm talking about the early Christians. It says, they worshiped together at the temple each day, met in homes for the Lord's Supper. In the temple, that's a large group. And, and then they met in homes in small groups like our growth groups. And they shared their meals with great joy and generosity, all the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their, there's that word, fellowship, those who were being saved. Now, some of you have embraced God's solution here, and you're, you're engaged in the church. But some of you, for whatever reason, you've kept the church at arm's length. You might come on some Sundays or, or, or join us for church online, but that's the, that's the extent of your commitment. And let me tell you, if that's it, you're missing out on God's dream for your life. So make it a point that you're going to connect to the church, that you're going to build these needed relationships in your life. And one important way to do this, you've heard us talking about it, but it's to be a part of one of our summer growth groups. You know, in a growth group, you're going to meet 10 to 20 other great people in the church. You're going to develop some really cool friendships with them. You're going to grow in your faith as you study the Bible, and you're going to have so much fun doing it. Summer growth groups, they begin this week, and they only meet once a week this summer for just 60 to 90 minutes. They end in August, so it's not a long commitment, and perfect attendance isn't required. Just attend as much as you can over the summer. It's your chance to bring some, some godly relationships into your life. And there are 30 different groups to choose from. So just click that button beside the live stream player or go to journeynyc.com forward slash groups and find your group. Sign up on, on, online uh, today. So if you want to discover God's dream for your life, if you want to understand God's purpose for your life, you need to pursue power to live on. You need to worship God. Then you need to find people to live with. You need to have godly fellowship. Then the next step to discover God's dream for your life is this. Write this in your notes. Pursue God's principles to live by. Pursue God's principles to live by. In other words, you need a clearly thought out philosophy of life. You need a moral foundation that gives you stability that you can rely on even when life seems confusing. You know, the number one reason why parents bring their kids to Journey Kids each week is that because they want their child to have a moral foundation. 
They want their children to know God from the start. But the moral foundation is just as important for adults. Fortunately, every principle that you need to live your life is found in this book, in God's Word, in in the Bible. In fact, in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8 says this. It says, study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. Let me tell you, everything that you need, the the principles to build your life on, let me tell you, they're found right here in God's Word, in, in Scripture. And what the Bible tells you about God's purpose for your life, let me just tell you, it almost always goes against what you're going to find in the movies and what you're going to find in our culture. God's wisdom almost always cuts against conventional wisdom. So uh, here's the point. Don't just do what everyone else is doing. Don't just do what's popular. Because God's principles for life and money and sex and relationships are almost always the opposite of what culture tells you. So if you want to discover God's dream for your life, you need to settle in your mind the guiding principles that you're going to live by. Now, there's a lot in this book, but I I want to give you a resource today called Pursue God's Principles to Live By. And uh, we're going to put, if you click the button beside the live stream player, it's it's an oversized bookmark, a resource that, that you can download. And I love this resource because on one side, it has, I believe, four of the most important scriptures from the New Testament of the Bible. It has Jesus' two great commandments, and then it has the great commission, and then the great compassion. Those are statements from Jesus. Then on the other side of the bookmark on the back, it has God's most important principles to live by from the Old Testament of the Bible. It has God's top ten list, the, the Ten Commandments. Now, you can get this resource, keep it near you, put it in your Bible, but I want to encourage you to read through these scriptures daily. Reorient yourself to God's biblical principles and and let them be the guiding force of your life. Now, let me end this this purpose by reading one of these great statements. According to Jesus, the most important principles to live your life by. Because in the New Testament, uh, someone approaches Jesus and asks this question. They say, teacher, what is the most important commandment? And when Jesus answers this, he replies with the great commandments. I have them there in your notes. Let's read them together. It's Matthew chapter 22, beginning in verse 37. Wherever you're joining us for church online, let's read this together. Uh, the, the, The great commandments from Jesus. Are you ready? Go. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. A second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. So that's the thing. You need principles to live by. And once you do that, here's your next pursuit to discover God's dream for your life. So so we said, pursue God's power to live on, that's worship. Pursue God's people to live with, uh, that's fellowship. Then we said, pursue God's principles to live by, that's discipleship, becoming more like Jesus by reading His Word. And then number four, pursue a godly plan to live out. Write that in. Pursue a godly plan to live out. Now let me tell you, you've got two options for how you can live your life. You can live your life by design, or you can live your life by default. If you decide to live your life by design and and you decide that you're going to live your life intentionally in alignment with with God's dream for your life and God's principles, you're going to make the most out of the life that God has given you. But if you decide, like most people, to live your life by default, in other words, you're living your life accidentally, you're you're drifting through life without a plan. If you do that, you're going to waste your life and you're going to waste all that God has given you. i found that most people just live their lives accidentally. You wake up each morning not knowing how you got to where you are and not knowing exactly where you're going. But I got to tell you, God has something much better planned for you. He has a plan for your life. In fact, if you're alive and you're breathing right now, that's proof that God has a plan for your life. And your life isn't going to make sense until you understand and embrace the fact 
that you were made by God and for God. So how do you discover God's plan for your life? How do you, how do you know what you're supposed to do with your life? Well, I can say it in one word. Service. Service is what you're supposed to do with your life. God's plan for your life is to find fulfillment as you serve Him and serve others. I want to go back to these famous words of, of Jesus found in Mark chapter 10, beginning in verse 42. Look at what Jesus says here. Jesus says, You know that the rulers in this world lord it over their people, and officials flaunt their authority over those under them. But among you, it will be different. He's about to say, hey, this is, this is my plan for your life. Whoever wants to be a leader among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first among you must be the slave of everyone else. For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others. Underline those two words, serve others, and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus says the path to real success in this life is serving God and serving others. That's why God made you one of a kind. There is no other person on this planet who is exactly like you, who God created exactly the way that He created you. With, with your gifts and your talents and your experiences. And God has a special plan to use you. But I want you to hear me. God made you to serve. Look, God didn't put you on this planet to be a selfish jerk and to just live totally for yourself. If you think that, you're going to have a miserable life. No, God wants you to make a contribution with your life. He wants you to give back. He wants you to leave a mark. He wants your life to make an impact in this world, to make a difference. You see, when you get to heaven, God isn't going to say, hey, hey, Carrick, why weren't you more like that guy over there? Why weren't you more like this woman over here? He's not going to say that. He's going to say, hey, Carrick, why didn't you do what I created you to do? Why didn't you make the impact that you were designed to make? And so here's my challenge for you. Make this summer, the summer of 2024, make it a summer of service. Listen, if you've been sitting on the sidelines, I, I want to challenge you to get in the game and to find a place to serve God by serving other people. Even if it's only for an hour, uh, once a month, uh, this, this summer, do it. Find a place where you can make a difference by serving others. In fact, if you'll go to your online connection card right now, and I don't know if you've ever seen it, but it's on the last page of your connection card. It lists all the different areas in our church where you can serve. And there's so many fun and interesting ways that you can make a difference. I'm just going to highlight a few of those. One, if, if you love kids and you, you have a gift of teaching or playing games and things like that, if you want to find out more about our Journey Kids area, or Journey Kids ministry, check that next step and let us know. Now, it's a, it's a very important area of our church, and because it's sensitive, everybody who serves there has to be a member and have a background check, but we'd love for you to consider it if you're interested in that. Or, or maybe you're an artist. You have the gift of singing or playing an instrument, or you're really good in the production area or design, or, or you're creative. We have a place for you on our worship arts team. Let us know that. Check that next step. Or maybe you've got the gift of hospitality, and you like welcoming people and having them feel like our church loves them. Well, maybe you want to be a part of our Sunday welcome team and help invite people when they come to our services in Times Square. Or maybe you've got administrative gifts and you like working behind the scenes. Well, we, you can come to the office during the week on Mondays and Thursdays or anywhere during the week and you can help make an impact there. There's community service opportunities. It, listen, here's the point. Don't get so caught up in yourself. Don't get so caught up in the busyness of life that you miss the main point of God's purpose and His dream for your life. He made you to serve others. And until you do that, you're never going to feel fully alive. And then here's the final pursuit. If you want to discover God's dream, God's purpose for your life, here's uh, the final part of His purpose for creating you. Write this in. Pursue godly passion to live for. Pursue godly passion to live for. You know, in our movie, If... B and Cal discovered that their passion, the, that the underlying purpose for their life, the way that they were gifted, they have this unique gift to be able to see imaginary friends, that their, their underlying purpose is uniting long-lost ifs with their original person. Their passion for pursuing their purpose, honestly, it's what makes the movie so interesting. And listen, everyone needs to feel that kind of passion, have that kind of purpose. 
You need to feel like your life matters. Sooner or later, everyone asks, does my life count? Now sadly, most people never discover God's dream for their life. They live their life living day to day just existing. But God says, listen, I didn't create you for nothingness. I created you for a purpose. I created you for a meaning. I have a reason for you living. Now, one guy who clearly understood God's purpose for his life was Paul. Here's his mission as as he understood it in Acts chapter 20, verse 24. Here's what Paul says. He says, but my life is worth nothing to me unless I use it for finishing the work assigned me by the Lord Jesus, my, my purpose. He says, the work of telling others the good news about the wonderful grace of God. Now, let me just tell you that if you're a follower of Jesus, if you're a Christian, this is a big part of your purpose, of your mission as well. Part of God's mission for your life is for you to help other people get to know Him as well, to help other people to discover their purpose too. You know, at the journey, we want to do everything we can to help you discover and live out God's dream, His purpose for your life. So let me talk to you on on, on a personal level for just a moment. If you would, just just look look up here for a moment. Where do you start? Kirk, I want to know God's purpose for my life. I want to live out the dream that He has for me. Where, Where do I start? Well, first, if you want to discover God's dream for your life, you'll never know it until you first say yes to Jesus. That's the first step. Because you're never going to find your true purpose in life apart from God. Get right with God today by saying yes to Jesus. That's the first step. Then the second step is baptism. Take the step to be baptized. You know, see, some of you can't see clearly God's next step for your life. You can't see clearly God's purpose, His dream for your life because the first step that God asked you to take after becoming a Christian to be baptized, you didn't take it. And so this disobedience is keeping you from God's dream for your life. And so if that's the step you haven't taken, I want to encourage you, don't put it off. Join us for our beach baptism coming up next month on Saturday, July 27th. It's going to be out at Jacob Reese Park in Queens. Take that step. So it begins by connecting with God, saying yes to Jesus, then getting baptized. And then once you've done that, then it becomes your mission in life to tell others about Jesus, to help others connect to God and experience the hope and the purpose that you yourself have already experienced. Let me tell you one simple way that you can do that, that you can live out that purpose, is to bring a friend with you next week as we continue our God on Film teaching series. I've already said that each week we're going to look at one of the summer's biggest movies and and at a a pressing and relevant topic. Next week is Father's Day. And so men, this this message is going to be for you. We're looking at the new Beach Boys documentary and, and we're going to look at the struggles of a godly man. What are the struggles that most men in our society today are facing? And like I said, there's even a rumor that we're going to have an eating contest following uh, the 1130 service next week. So here's my my encouragement to you. Invite a friend and bring someone with you. Now, we're going to be back here at Church Online next week for, for Father's Day. But, and that's great. If you, if you uh, need to attend church online, do that. But I want to encourage you, if possible, bring someone with you to our in-person services at 10 a.m. or 11.30 a.m. in Times Square. Do that. Listen, don't ever forget, God has a purpose for your life. It's His dream for you. He's had that dream for your life since you were in your mother's womb. And your job is to pursue that dream so that you can live out the purpose that God created you for. And when you do, let me tell you, when you discover God's dream for your life, when you begin living it out, you're never going to feel more alive because that's what you were created for. Our final verse is our memory verse for today. It's found in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. I want you to read this out loud with me. Are you ready? Go. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things He planned for us long ago ago. You are God's masterpiece. He has incredible plans for you, but it all begins by giving, by giving your life to Jesus. That's the first step to connecting to God's dream for your life. You can do that today. You can say yes to Jesus as we pray. So wherever you join us for Church Online, if you would, bow your heads, close your eyes, and let's go to God in prayer right now. Father, thank you for creating us for a purpose. 
for having a dream for our lives. God, help help us to pursue, pursue you and discover and live out that dream so we can live our lives to the fullest. I pray that for everyone who's listening to me right now. God, we don't want to waste another day of our life. Father, right now, I also want to pray for for those who are listening to me who need to take that first step and put their trust in your Son, Jesus Christ. And if that's you, and if you're ready to take that step today, you're ready to step across the line, get right with God and say yes to Jesus, I want to ask you to pray the simple prayer in your heart. Pray it silently as I pray it out loud. It's simply this. Father, I know I haven't talked to you in a really long time, but today I want to know you better. I want want to know my purpose and your dream for my life. I want to connect to you and get connected to a church family. I want to know you and I want to fulfill the purpose that you created me for. I believe today that Jesus died for my sins and rose from the dead. So come into my life, forgive me of my sins. I want to follow you from this day forward as a part of your church. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.